So in this video, I want to come back to the cohomology of island Burmaclean spaces, some of which we were computing using the Sayre spectral sequence. And I want to tie that into the discussion we've been having about the Steenrod algebra. And the connection here is really going to be uh, talking about cohomology operations, and in particular, stable cohomology operations. So it'll take me a little bit to build that up. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's let G be some abelian group. And we'll think about X. This will be some N minus one connected space. Uh, the main example that I really want to have in mind is the Island Bird McLean space, say KGN. And then there's this Hravich map. Let's call it H. So this is going to go from pi n of our space, which I'll call x, to h n of x. And actually, in general, it's just a map from homotopy to homology. But in this degree, when we're in the n minus 1 connected uh, situation, this is going to be an isomorphism. OK, and I guess technically, if I want to be careful, uh, this, I should have something about the commutator when n is equal to 1, so let's just say n is greater than 1 for this discussion, but everything that I'm saying here we, we can work out for degree 1. Okay, so then remember we had this universal coefficient theorem. This told us how to get the cohomology of our space x in, say, g coefficients, and in general we should hom from the homology and integral coefficients to a group. And then there's a correction term, our x1, and that comes from the homology in one degree lower, and we take x with g. Okay, so uh, with all of that in mind, we can define for x some n minus one connected space. And just to be consistent with what we've written, let's let g be pi n of x. So again, I'm assuming that n is greater than 1, so this is some abelian group, but we could make this precise for um, degree 1 if we wanted. Okay, so what I want to define is something called the fundamental class. And the fundamental class is going to be a class in the cohomology in degree n. So I'll call it iota n. And uh, this is going to be in g coefficients. So how do we get this element? Well, if you thought about uh, n minus 1 connected spaces much before, then, then I think this is fairly straightforward. But let's chase it through. So. This is going to be the element, well, we're supposed to be in the nth cohomology of x with coefficients in g. And oh, I just scrolled past what I wanted. So uh, using our universal coefficient theorem, we know that's hom uh, plus an x term. But that x is going to come from one deg degree lower. And we know we have 0 there. So this is just isomorphic to hom from the homology of x to our abelian group G. And uh, maybe let me put in here, this is that it was n minus 1 connected. OK, and then that's also, let me move that above. OK, so this is uh, also going to be isomorphic to hom from hn of x to pi n of x. Now, our Hrabich, uh isomorphism tells us that these are the same. They're both g. And it goes the other way. So actually, we have h inverse here, the inverse to our Hrabich map, uh, which I called h above. And then iota n is just the element of cohomology, or the class in cohomology, which maps to the inverse of the Hrabich map. 
Okay, so uh, under these isomorphisms. Okay, so uh, there's a fundamental class, and in particular, if we're thinking about our, our space of choice here, the eilenberg maclean space, Kgn, if we work in g coefficients, then of course we're going to have pi n is g. That's the definition of the Simon McLean space. And so uh, we'll get this fundamental class, iota n in degree n. Okay, so then an important theorem, which we use really all of the time, uh, or I use quite regularly, is that if you want to compute the reduced cohomology of some space with coefficients in g, this is actually the same as computing uh, homotopy classes of maps, pointed maps from X to KGN, your eilenberg maclean space. And what do you do to find that isomorphism? Well, you take some HOM here, so some map from X to the eilenberg maclean space. That's going to induce a map backwards on cohomology. And so you get some F upper star on cohomology, and you just send over that fundamental class iota n and whatever you get. So, and that's the isomorphism. Okay, it would take us sort of uh, probably a whole video, if not more, to prove this. So let me just say for now that the proof uses obstruction theory. And if you want to see the proof, Uh, it's definitely outlined quite nicely in chapter one of Mosher and Tangor, so that would be a good place to look. Okay, so how are we going to use that? Well, we needed this fundamental class to witness uh, this isomorphism, and now that we have that isomorphism uh, by abstraction theory, well, we can use the Oneida lemma and uh, see that natural transformations from the reduced homology uh, functor with coefficients in some abelian group A to reduced cohomology in degree M with maybe different coefficients G well, by the Yoneda lemma, this just corresponds to, or these correspond to uh, maps from our representing objects, those island and clean spaces, so K-A-N to K-G-N. And now we finally see why the cohomology of these island and clean spaces is coming into play. That's precisely H-M, I guess, reduced if you don't want to reduce, uh, you can just give something a disjoint base point. Problem here is we're using based map, so uh, okay. In any case, this is HM of the first thing, K-A-N, with coefficients in the second thing, so that's G. Okay, so uh, our cohomology operations are going to correspond to things like this, and in particular, the ones that we're interested in Our cohomology operations that look like things that go from the reduced homology, sorry, cohomology in mod 2 coefficients to, well, I'll change the degree, maybe increase by i or something. Let's make it k, just because that's what I have in my notes, and I don't know if it's going to matter. But still in mod 2 coefficients, so both a and g are z mod 2 here. Well, this tells us these are exactly the same as the reduced cohomology in degree m plus k of the representing objects, island for McLean space, so k z mod 2 n, and it looks like we're working in mod 2 coefficients. Okay, so uh, this is why we're going to want the, well, one of the reasons we'll want the cohomology of our island for McLean spaces. But what we're really after are stable operations. So if we want stable cohomology ops, we 
We want stable cohomology operations in the sense that they commute with the suspension. Remember we saw that if we just take the cup square, that doesn't commute with suspension because suspension kills cup products, but we claim these Steenrod squares did, did do the right thing with suspension. Well, all stable cohomology operations are classified by essentially this uh, cohomology group that we were just talking about, but we need to build in that suspension. So this is just going to be the inverse limit over n of the reduced homology cohomology hm plus k of the eilenberg maclean spaces. Okay, and last time, uh, you all caught me on talking about a co-limit without discussing maps, so let me say what I'm taking the inverse limit over. It's not really hard, but somehow there are a few maps involved, so maybe it's worth spelling it out precisely. So uh, what is this inverse limit going to be over? Well, really I want to end up going from the uh, cohomology in degree k plus 1 of my Allenberg maclean space. Uh, I guess this is where I'm thinking of taking n plus 1, so k z mod 2, n plus 1, and then plus k in the uh, coefficients. Let me, um, well, I've got room. Let's go ahead and just put in mod 2 coefficients. Though at some point, I may just say we're working mod 2 and, and ignore that and leave it off. Uh, so what I want is a map to the reduced cohomology uh, one degree lower of kz mod 2 n, again in mod 2 coefficients, really mod 2 everywhere. Okay, so how am I going to get that map? Well, we've just identified this group on the left with homotopy classes of maps between kz2 n plus 1 and k z mod 2 uh, n plus k plus 1. And on the right, we've got maps from k z mod 2 n to k z mod 2 n plus k. Okay, for the same reason. I wrote equal, but of course, these are really isomorphic under that, that isomorphism that we saw. Um, and I should have said that's a natural isomorphism, so natural in this first component. Okay, so how am I going to cook up this map? Well, what I want to do is start with a map from the, uh, well, okay, what I really want to do is start with a map from kz mod 2 n plus 1 to kz mod 2 n plus k plus 1. I'm going to pre-compose that with a map from the suspension of kz mod 2 n. Okay, and how do I get this map? Well, if you've thought about uh, spectra at all, you've probably thought about this, but this is, of course, adjoint uh, to the identity where I take kz mod 2 n to kz mod 2 n, and I guess I don't really just want the identity, I want to recognize, as we have before, that kz mod 2 n is a, a model for, um, or really that loops on kz mod 2 n plus 1 is a model for kz mod 2 n, so under that homotopy equivalence. Okay, so uh, that's a map from a space, kz mod 2 n, uh, to loops on something, and so I can adjoint over using the loop suspension adjunction, and so I get a map out of the suspension to that that space. Okay, great. And now I want to take this whole composite and take the adjoint, and that will give me uh, something that looks like a map from kz mod 2n over to, and I'll end up with loops on this last piece, kz mod 2 
nk plus 1, and of course, that's a model for kz mod 2 n plus k. Okay, so uh, really, this, this map uh, that maps between the cohomology involves using this loop suspension and junction a couple times, but otherwise it's nothing complicated. Okay, and then I want to take the inverse limit of those. And that classifies all stable cohomology operations. That builds in that we should work well with the suspension. And then the claim is that we actually know what we get here. So the claim is that the Steenrod algebra is isomorphic to this inverse limit. Okay, so in other words, the Steenrod algebra, we could say it classifies the stable operations. Another way of saying that is that these squares that we've met, the square i, those really are all of the stable cohomology operations. So we've completely solved this problem, which is great. However, we're going to need to prove this. And to prove this, oops, what will we do? Well, we'll just need to compute the cohomology of these island bro mclean spaces and then try to witness that Steenrod algebra uh, showing up. Okay, so I'll do that in the next video, but maybe let me just finish this one with an aside. And I won't dwell on this until we need it, if we need it, but I spent all this time talking about the Steenrod algebra, and as many of you know, I'm sure there's an analogous story for odd primes. Maybe let me not write down all of the details, but there are Steenrod power operations. Sometimes they're even called Steenrod squares, though. That's kind of a misnomer, uh, but they behave very similarly. So often they're denoted with P to the I instead of uh, square squat I, um, because these are power operations. They're going to go from uh, the cohomology of some space. These will be natural transformations, natural homomorphisms as usual uh, for the nth cohomology in mod P coefficients for an odd prime to the n plus 2, oops, 2i times p minus first cohomology, again in mod p coefficients. And uh, we get a bunch of similar axioms. So these commute with suspension um, and, and so on. And I will say the ADEM relations are worse here. So often people hold off on introducing these um, at first just because it's kind of a mess. But what's the point of these? Well, these are really operations that do the job of stabilizing the pth power map. So I can take uh, A and cup with itself P times where P is an odd prime. And then the Steenrod algebra and sometimes it's called the mod p Steenrod algebra or often even just the Steenrod algebra, though that's a little bit confusing. Sometimes people denote it a sub p, sometimes they leave off the p and you're supposed to know from context. Um, but the moral of the story is that this uh, classifies in the same way the stable cohomology operations on uh, cohomology with mod p coefficients. Okay, so um, 
there's there's a similar story here and ultimately the Steenrod algebra will pop up for us probably many times between now and then but we're working towards the atom spectral sequence where the E2 page we start with x over the Steenrod algebra and you could do that for for any prime so uh, somehow it's most commonly used at the prime two but certainly makes sense at odd primes too and then you would want the mod p Steenrod algebra Okay, so uh, maybe let me stop this video and, and we'll move on to proving this, this claim in the next one.